What will you do if your script is failing but the functionality is working fine? How do you handle this kind of situation? Very common question when it start giving interviews. This is a common question which you can expect. It is basically situation based question. They will give you certain situation and they want to understand your thought process. They want to understand your solution and the approach towards this problem. So when it comes to this scenario, it's very common guys, right? If you have automated any application that you might have seen that many times application is working fine, but your script is failing. So let me show you how you can handle this kind of question. Hi everyone, my name is Mukesh Shotwani from learnhaveinvention.com and this video will talk about the different reasons why your script fails and how you can answer this in interviews. Now talking about this situation, it's very common, right? Basically, most of the time our script fails, 90% of the time is two reasons, locators and your sync issues. Okay, let's discuss one by one. Once you understand these two points, then I will again give you some certain more points which will give you more clarity and more points to add in your interview. Now let's talk about locator first. Many times when we develop our scripts, right? Uh, when you write your scripts or maybe are recording using certain recording tools, we use certain locators, ID, name, X, pass, case, selector, link text. If you have written certain locators, which is changing but you have not written a proper XPath or proper CSS selectors, chances are very high that your script might fail. So when you develop the script locally, it's working fine, but there's a new deployment or the new release, locator got updated. Functionality is working fine, but behind the scene, locator got updated. And since you have not used proper locator, chances are very high that your script will start failing. Let me show you one example. So this is one application. If I right click and show you the dome structure, you can see we have one attribute called name. We also have attribute called placeholder and ID. Let's say you used ID called email one, or maybe used one locator called uh, driver.find element by name email one. New release came and it changed to email two. Functionality is working fine. Your locator got updated. Your script will start failing. So you have to use proper locators, locators in a such a way that even something is changing dynamically, your script should be able to maintain it. For example, if I use XPath with contains function that find the input tag where ID contains email, I'm not including one, I just said email. So even it's email two, email three, email four, it will not fail because I'm using contains function. Similarly, I can use CSS selector. Or if I don't want to use that, I can use some smart attribute, for example, I could have written that find an input tag where placeholder equal to enter email, right? So placeholder is basically what you see here. So even locator got updated, but placeholder will not change. So in that way you can handle this. For us, how to check is exception trace. Any issue that you face in your script, definitely it will fail. The moment it will fail, you will get exception trace. So exception trace, the moment you start reading it, you will get to know what went wrong with your script. Is it the locator? Is it the sync issue? Is it some scrolling issue? So many things. So first one is locator. If you use smart locators, the script failure rate will come down. Sync issues. Again, very common issue that the moment you retain your script, everything was fast. It was loading properly. But now the new release is there. Now you have some uh, in terms of application, it's little slow or the few elements are not loading properly or it's loading after some time. So if you don't use proper weights, your scripts will start failing. Again, give you an example. For example, if I click on this link and if I don't use weight, did you notice there was some loader icon? It was hardly for one second. Again, go back. Locator came after one second. Now, if you don't use proper weights, if your elements are coming after some time, it will start failing. This is just one example, but <clears throat> if you go to my previous videos, you will understand the different kind of weights with that we can use. But most of the time your script will fail because of two reasons, locator issues and the sync issues. If you handle locators and synchronization in a better way, you can actually make your scripts very stable. Again, to handle sync issues, you can use proper weights. You can use uh, explicit weight. You can use fluent weight, right? You can use implicit weight as well. Depends on the situation and the expected condition. And when it comes to locators, how you can stabilize, we can write dynamic locators or you can say smart locators. 
The third reason which is again very common is basically cross browser cross platform. What I mean, let's say I'm running my script on Chrome browser, it's working fine. But the moment I use the same script for different browser, let's say Safari browser or uh, Firefox browser, Edge browser, my script will start failing. Again, you need to identify for which particular element what went wrong. It could be uh, the element was coming fine in Chrome in two seconds, but or in Firefox, it took more than five seconds. Maybe it was coming in 10 seconds in Firefox in Fi Safari, it's taking 15. So sometimes few browser loads the component little slowly because of that, when you change your browser, your script might start failing. So again, there's no hard and fast rule. You need to see the exception trace, what went wrong for which element and you add the weight accordingly. If it is a locator issue, try to use a better locator. Try to use a different attribute, which you have used last time. Same thing happens when you do cross platform testing. Now what is cross platform testing? Let's say I created one script for Mac Chrome. If I execute the same thing on Windows, Linux, sorry, Windows, Linux, or any other OS on different browser, chances are high that it might fail. Again, we need to find a pattern. We need to analyze for which element it failed. We have to make a fix. Coming back to next point is the viewport. It's a very technical term. Let me explain you in uh, plain English is basically the scrolling issue. Now what I mean, now imagine you want to automate this registration page. Okay. Now I'm using a bigger monitor. So this complete page is visible right now. But imagine if my screen size is like this. Okay. If I'm using a small monitors or let's say I want to automate this in iPad or tablets, this is how the UI will look like. In this case, your script will fail. Why? Because in order to click on the sign in button, it has to be in a view. If it is not in a view, your script will fail. Not because of no such element exception. It could be because of the scrolling issue. It is not visible. It is not in a viewport. Your script might fail. So make sure even if functionality is working fine, but in your script, if you have to do scrolling, or maybe you have to execute some JavaScript, then only it will work. Otherwise it will fail. So let me write down all things here. So during cross browser, cross platform, scrolling issues. And I have seen multiple times when you change environments, it fails. Sometimes few environments are slow, few environments are uh, little fast. Let's say dev environment, queue environment, staging environment. Let's say if you have canary environment, when you run the same script across multiple environments, then also it might fail. Again, identify the pattern, then make the fixes. One more reason which I have uh, faced and noticed is the test data. Let's say if you have written your script in such a manner that you are hard coding the test data. For example, in this application again, if I hard code the data with one uh, user, if I execute this script again, it will say registered, right? Because I have not used dynamic email, dynamic usernames, it will fail again. So if your script needs dynamic data, please provide dynamic data. It could be through external files. It could be a faker library. It could be taking data from databases. So if your script demands dynamic data, please pass it. If you pass static data, few times it will run next time it will fail. So make sure you use all, all of this in order to stabilize your script. So these are the practical points I have given. Now let me explain how you can explain in interviews. So if you come across this question that what if your script fails during execution, but functionality is working fine, how you will handle the situation. So your answer would be the moment my script will fail. Let's say I executed my hundred test cases and maybe 20 scripts are failing immediately. I will check the logs. If I have implemented log 4G, I will quickly check the logs. Otherwise I will go to my report, see the exception trace and I will notice what went wrong. If it is failing because of the bug, I will immediately raise. But if it is failing because of the locator issues, I will immediately update the locators. It could be changing the locators or changing the attributes. If my script is failing because of the sync issues, very common, then I will use uh, smart weights. I will use explicit fluent weight, implicit weight to fix this scripts. If it is failing because of the different environment, different browser, different platform, I will analyze what went wrong for a specific element. I will make the changes. If some scroller bar is coming or some elements are covering other elements, again, very common issues. One element is there, but other elements is covering the time. So scripts fail. So for this case, you can say 
if my elements are covered by other elements or not visible i will be making the changes accordingly and the last one i will also check the test data if my script is failing because of the test data then i will make the changes to my test data so this is how you can explain interviews again be ready if they ask you cross question related to this you should be able to answer it yeah that's all about this video in case this video helped you in any manner then do support this channel share with your friends subscribe this channel if you have any other questions which is running in your mind which you are not able to answer in the review let me know in the comment section and i will try my best to cover in the next video till then bye bye take care and see you in the next video have a nice day bye bye